ChatGPT gets more up-to-date information, AI for ads becomes a big trend, and the chip battles rage on. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown Brief, all the AI headline news you need in around five minutes. One of the biggest news stories of the day is the report that the White House is expected to release its AI executive order on Monday, but that will be the topic of the main show. So for now, let's cover some of the other most relevant news from this morning, starting with a little update, but a significant one to ChatGPT. Now, this has been a little less relevant since ChatGPT with Browse came to the fore, but the knowledge cutoff for ChatGPT has moved up once again. When ChatGPT first came out, the knowledge cutoff was in 2021, and then recently it moved up to the end of 2022. Now, however, ChatGPT seems to be reporting on some desktop users that its information is up to date as of April 2023, which some folks tested by asking what was happening in and around that time. But then other folks are seeing even more up to date information. When developer Nick Dobos asked the iOS app, ChatGPT said, my knowledge is current as of September 2023. Now, obviously, this makes it a lot more useful to use, even not in the browse with Bing version. But I think it's also a reflection of just how much competitive pressure is shaping the way that AI labs make decisions. Initially, the knowledge cutoff was a safety feature, as was not giving it access to the internet. But competitive pressure made both of those things go by the wayside fairly quickly. Anyways, moving on to the business side of the AI space, the big tech giants aren't just interested in AI because of the ways that it shapes the business models of the future and creates new product opportunities and positions themselves for the glorious years to come, but also because it has implications for their core ad business right now. For example, yesterday TechCrunch reported that Google is actively looking to insert different types of ads in its generative AI search. This information, like much of what we've had reported from Google this week, comes from their earnings call on Tuesday, where they said that they are experimenting with a variety of different types of ad formats that are better suited to generative AI-powered search. Now, of course, this is hugely relevant because as many new products and different services as Google has, and as many attempts as they've made to diversify their revenue, the majority of their revenue still comes from ads. While we don't really have a lot of information about what the new ad units might look like, Alphabet CEO Sundar Pichai has made very clear that they believe that there is going to be a new type of native ad format that's designed specifically to work with the search generative experience and is, as he put it, customized to every step of the search journey. Now, speaking of ads, another place that AI is coming into the ad world is that the big platforms that allow self-service ad creation, such as Meta and Amazon, are giving advertisers more AI-powered tools to help them create better performing ads for customers more easily. As of Tuesday, Amazon has become the latest to roll out this type of toolset, adding AI-powered image generation to their advertising platform. Amazon points out that in a survey from March of this year, among advertisers who were unable to build successful campaigns, 75%, three quarters of them, cited building ad creative and choosing a creative format as their biggest challenges. This is, Amazon contends, and I subjectively agree, an area where AI image generation can be hugely significant. The example they give is for a toaster. Maybe an advertiser has a standalone image of the toaster on a white background, but they say that when it's placed in a lifestyle context, for example, on a countertop surrounded by fall accoutrements, click-through rates can be 40% higher compared to just generic product images. Again, this may not be the side of AI that gets your gears turning, but when it comes to the immediate-term economic impact, a lot of it is going to be in this sort of changing the way that advertising is made and consumed. And apparently it's working. Yahoo Finance reported this week Meta and Google's earnings signal an AI-fueled revival in ads. The piece begins, A rebound in the advertising business of Google, Meta, and Snap signaled that the growing adoption of artificial intelligence was drawing markers to digital platforms even in an uncertain economy. They pointed out that each of these companies posted positive metrics for their ad business, and that a lot of the shift is around how AI is helping the ad process. Now, one other announcement from Google that I thought was interesting the company has announced new tools to help fact check images. Now, you may remember a couple days ago or a week ago, I don't even know, I've lost all track of time, that I talked about how OpenAI had an AI image detection tool, but that they weren't sure when or if they were actually going to release it. Now, of course, OpenAI had an AI detection tool for written text that they pulled because of inaccuracy. On the one hand, we've gotten signals from the company that they believe that this new tool for image detection is much more accurate. The CTO in an interview used the phrase 99% accurate to describe it, and yet still there is a lot of concern here. Of course, people are very hungry for ways to better determine what's real in a world where it's getting harder and harder, if not already impossible, to differentiate between real images, quote unquote, and images that are generated by artificial intelligence. 
A different approach that some are trying is the voluntary inclusion of invisible pixels that can be read by detectors but are not visible to the human eye. Adobe announced something similar earlier this month in partnership with companies like Microsoft and Nikon. And for Google, the approach is a new menu option where people can click and select about this image to get more context about where and when it was taken, how long it's been on the web, and more. When it's available, users can also see metadata, including fields that indicate if it's an AI-generated image. This is all part of a larger update to Google's fact check tools. Then we come today back to a big theme of the year, which is of course the AI chip shortage, as well as the geopolitics around chips. It seems like there isn't a day that goes by without some announcement in this sphere. One of those today was that a company called CentML had raised money from giants like Google and NVIDIA to help combat the chip shortage by training AI systems to operate more efficiently. Now, what's notable about this is that this is a $27 million seed round. Here's how Bloomberg describes how it works. The software helps predict the time taken to process tasks using different kinds of hardware. It monitors systems to pinpoint areas of underutilization, analyzing cost, power consumption, and emissions, then automatically distributes tasks to try and speed them up. Apparently, according to research that the company has conducted, the average utilization for GPUs across the market is around 30%. The promise of CentML is that it can quicken systems by as much as 8x they claim. The team is a combination of PhDs from Carnegie Mellon and the University of Toronto, and will be one to watch if it can deliver on these promises. Meanwhile, other former giants of the chip space have had to shift their strategy entirely as they kind of get left behind. In kind of a brutal headline, the information writes, AI laggard Intel expands effort to help companies build ChatGPT-like apps. Effectively, the piece writes that as the company has been left behind by other rival chip makers, instead, or at least in the short term, it's focusing on selling specialized software and services. Intel, they write, is working with multiple consulting firms to build ChatGPT-like apps for customers who don't have the expertise to do it on their own. They apparently began doing this with BCG earlier in the year, but have added additional consulting firm partners as well. Now, this, of course, positions them in a similar, if slightly different space to things like Amazon's Bedrock and Databricks and all of these companies that are designed to help enterprises either train models from the ground up or customize and fine-tune open source models. And while it might not be the chip space, it's certainly something where there is likely to be a lot of demand. Now, one last story on the chip space. As we discussed yesterday, NVIDIA said that the new U.S. export restrictions, which were anticipated to come into effect about a month from now, instead actually came into effect Monday. Now, part of the reason for that is likely concern that every day that goes on, especially after export restrictions are announced, is a day where China may get more access to the advanced chips that the U.S. is trying to deny them access to. Bloomberg had a breaking story this morning that basically said that before certain restrictions on ASML-produced machines could be implemented, that some of those machines were sold to China and that their technology was used with other tools to produce a highly controversial Huawei chip. The story sort of stands as a risk of delaying these things, and I think for our purposes dramatizes just how significant an issue the U.S. sees this, which I believe is in and of itself good setup for today's main discussion about the crescendo in policy discourse around the world. So that is going to do it for the AI Breakdown Brief. Thanks, as always, for listening or watching. Up next, the main AI Breakdown.